How's it going everybody? Happy Friday again and welcome back to Griff Talks. So to start things off, I do have a couple of updates for one more spark. As of right now, I do have most of the 1999 cars complete. I still got about four more to go, but it's getting there. It's a long process, but I'm getting there. One of the cars I did paint was on Tuesday night. If you guys saw my uh, social media, I decided to take some time and create Jeff Gordon's Superman car that he drove in the Winston from 1999. The reason why I did it was because I did not see a good like replica of that car painted. And so I wanted to take some time and try to make it as realistic as possible. I'm not going to release it anytime soon because there are a couple of little things like the driver's suit and the pit box. I have not painted those yet. Unless there's some minor tweaks I gotta do with some of the decals. I'll get to that later. And what I will do is during the prologue in the description below of that video, I will release the car there. Now in terms of resources, I did use some of the online stuff, but I also have a die cast as well. Jeff Gordon's number 24 Superman car in the Flash. It's funny because both superheroes are in the DC universe. So anyway, that's what's up with that. And then the other big thing that I want to add on for One More Spark is I want to make this series as realistic as possible with i.e. paint schemes and different cars. Now I am sticking to the whole one sponsor, one driver deal. But I'm still cool with paint schemes, where they only race once, and then that's it. And I'm totally, totally fine with that. One other little thing that a person on Facebook asked, talked about how many amount of drivers in per race, will that change at all? Because like in 1987, at Bristol, North Wilkesboro, and Richmond, only 32 cars raced. What I will do is I will bump up that number a little bit, but one thing to keep in mind was in the 1987 car set that was made for the Aero 88 mod on NASCAR Racing 2003 season, there were only 50 cars made. But if you look at the 1987 Daytona 500 list and you see all the cars that failed to qualify, there was like 60, almost 70 cars that entered. Now, unfortunately, I'm not going to get so specific as to re-entering all of those guys. My focus is only on the drivers that did compete the entire season. That's my main focus. So unfortunately, some drivers that attempt one or two races, they may be left off. But in the whole scope of things, that's kind of what is going to go on. Now let's talk about Matt Kenseth. He's back in the news because he's retiring. No, I'm kidding. He's not retiring. No, what's happened is on Wednesday, he got a new sponsor, Circle K. Circle K is a gas and convenience store found in 41 states across America. The Circle K car, you will see it at Richmond, Talladega, the Coke 600, Kentucky, Texas, the second Texas race, and Phoenix. So it's very good to see another sponsor on there. Kind of wish the sponsor would, or the company would sponsor the car for the entire season, but the times we live in, that's pretty much impossible. But I believe because of this, we won't see that Toyota car like what we saw at Texas anymore. Hopefully that's the case, but that information is not out for us, which kind of makes sense. Next, let's talk about Tommy Joe Martins. He is absolutely spoken about out about getting into NASCAR and having a good car or truck all over Twitter and Instagram. It was announced earlier that he is moving up to the Xfinity series. It is not a full-time gig. With the help of Diamond Goosette Jeans, Tommy Joe Martins is going to be able to run some Xfinity races. That is so good to see, and hopefully, 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 he would do some good. I mean, it's tough. Like, it's really tough, especially all the money that's going into those bigger teams. But any support for Tommy Joe Martins as he continues to try being a good driver would greatly be appreciated. Now, unfortunately, this news came out earlier on Wednesday, because I'm recording this on Wednesday. It was announced that Tommy Joe Martins is withdrawing from Bristol this weekend. And the big reason why is because there's a 90% chance of rain throughout this Bristol weekend, which sucks as a whole. Unfortunately, because of that, Tommy Joe Martins fears that he will not be able to qualify into the race without even setting a lap on the track. 
So instead of wasting money, going to the track, winning it out, and being told that he's not going to be able to race, they're going to save a few cents by staying home for that weekend. He did say he will be back for Richmond, though. So again, any support for Tommy Joe Barnes will be fantastic because those other teams, they've already got plenty of support as is. Now let's talk about Kevin Harvick. He is back in the news for the second week in a row, and it's because he was talking. <laughs> this show should be called Harvick Talks or something like that. It's probably not as cool as Griff Talks, but that's just my opinion. Anyway, what he talked about this week is the all-star race should go to different racetracks. He thinks that the way how it should be set up is that it should be like a bidding process. Because like in the World Cup and the Olympics, different places put bids so that they host it for that year. That's what tracks should do for every year for the all-star race. Three tracks Kevin Harvick brought up were Iowa, Nashville Fairgrounds, not the Super Speedway, and Bristol. And Kevin also talked about the idea of having it be like a multi-day event, like bringing back the pit crew challenge and other little events so that all drivers and crew members can show off their skills, just like the all-star game in basketball and the all-star game in baseball, among other things. So as great as that sounds, the other thing that you also got to consider is tradition, because it's just tradition for the all-star event to be at Charlotte. And I know how NASCAR with Monster, they're all changing it to new because they're more inclined to the younger audience. So I could see that down the road. In my personal opinion, I'd prefer if it stays at Charlotte just for that traditional sake. But if it does go to different places, I wouldn't mind. But one thing I got from the article I found this on, the reason why, because you guys remember in 1986, the All-Star Race was at Atlanta because originally it was gonna go to different tracks. But the problem was there was such little attendance at that Atlanta race that NASCAR decided to keep it at Charlotte because that's like the home track, that's where everybody is, and it's supposed to be a load of fun at their home ground, per se. And then the final thing I want to talk about is the race cup coming this weekend, and that is Bristol. So a couple of things to note for Bristol. First of all, they are bringing back the lower groove. They're bringing back that tire dragon thingy so that we will see a low groove again. So we'll see how that goes throughout the race this weekend. Also, it was announced that this will be the third track on the schedule where Victory Lane is gonna be moved to the front stretch of said racetrack. Atlanta did it earlier this year, and then Martinsville has been doing it as well. It's nice because Victory Lane, because then they could celebrate with the fans. So yeah, I definitely think it's a nice little trend that I do appreciate that is growing. So the Xfinity Series and the Cup Series are going to be at Bristol. The um, Xfinity race at Bristol, excuse me, is going to be a Dash for Cash race. With that being said, though, there are still a few Cup guys racing, including Eric Jones, Daniel Suarez, and then the pick who I have to win is Kyle Larson. He's been red hot in the Cup Series, and he's also been doing fairly well in the Xfinity Series. I think he'll get it done in the Cup Series. The experienced driver to watch out for will be Elliot Sadler, and simply because, again, he does have experience. Also, he has won a cup race here at Bristol in 2001. Now, on the cup side, the driver I have to watch out for will be Kyle Larson, but I have someone else winning. The driver that I have winning is going to be the boss man, Dale Earnhardt Jr. It is a stretch, but my thinking is this. First time I picked a Hendrick guy to win, he won, and that being Jimmy Johnson at Texas. So let's go for two. I think Dale Jr. will win. He has found success here at Bristol and hopefully he'll continue to have success this weekend at Bristol. Hopefully it doesn't rain though, because again, if there's a 90% chance of rain, that sucks. And hopefully that's not the case. So I am gonna wrap up the video here. It is shorter, but the biggest reason why is so I could focus more on one more spark. You will see updates on my social media, as you will see here, and you will get updates on when like the prologue will be released, as well as some other cars that you will see in the series. So again, I'm going to wrap up the video here. If you guys have any questions or comments about anything in NASCAR or anything about One More Spark, please go ahead and post it down below. I will read it and I'll possibly respond to you. 
Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I will see you next time.